One thing that most agents are not doing that you, you can kind of determine where over the next year do you want to do this? You don't got to cram it all in in one quarter, of course. Okay. I'm going to pick every quarter. Hey, what do I want to go after this quarter? They're, they're not creating location pages for sellers. They're mainly creating location pages for buyers. So they're going out there creating the, you know, homes for sale in Eugene near the campus, you know, land for sale Eugene. Those are all great. Continue to do those. Yeah. But what they're not doing is creating niches for the sellers like That's we do on the investor side. The investor side, we get, we niche the crap out of the seller pages, but, it, but agents, we forget about it. And they usually just have one page for agents. So keep this page here. But if there are types of houses in Eugene mm-hmm. that you love to be able to work with more of those sellers, yeah. If there are situations sellers are going in that you'd love to work with them more, even if it's like motivated house seller phrases that you would usually work with um, on the investment side, yeah. as you go, that might be a good strategy to build out some of those. What's up, y'all? Trevor coming at you with kind of a new type of carrot cast episode I'm excited about. And I want to do these more because being honest, I probably do two, three or four of these a week anyway with customers. Um, I just haven't had a chance to like record any of them. And and the funny thing is Brady in my office, we were sitting here chatting uh, several weeks or months back. And he's like, man, it'd be, it'd be awesome if you could like record some of that because on my end, I'm going, man, it's, it's 90%, 80 to 90% the same stuff it's the plan, like execute the plan. And so we're gonna start doing some more of these, we might call them a business teardown, or I don't know what we're calling, but we're essentially hopping on with with a a client of ours, Uh, Carol, I'll introduce you to Robert here in a second. We're hopping on with the client, we're gonna then kind of break down what have they done, what are their strategies, and then really lay out exactly what they need to do to move forward to win in their market. So hopefully you guys enjoy this new format. Uh, You'll definitely get a lot more out of the video version of this. So head over to our YouTube channel, just go uh, in YouTube and look up Carrot or Investor Carrot, Agent Carrot. You'll find it in there. Um, and or just go to carrot.com and then go over to our blog and you'll be able to find our Carrot Cast episodes over there. So check it out, guys. The video, you're going to see a lot of value. You're going to be able to see screens. You're going to be able to see the research. You're going to be able to see me writing notes on my iPad, the whole thing. But um, I want to welcome on our first guest on whatever we're going to call this series as we do these. Uh, Robert Grant, I'll, I'll tell a little bit about you, man. And then I want to have you, you dive in. So for some context, y'all, Robert... Uh, is in a town really near us in Eugene, about an hour north of where I am sitting right now in, in Roseburg, Oregon. Uh, his brother Ricky came down to our last carrot camp, which was a blast having him there and just seeing the changes that have happened you know, within him even since then, which is really cool. Uh, but he's an agent and an investor doing some really cool things using carrot for both. So that's kind of high level. But uh, Robert, welcome on, man. Appreciate you having, uh, hopping on here with me. Hey, thanks, Trevor. Really appreciate it, man. Super excited to take a look at these websites and break them down. I've been, been working hard on them, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you haven't, man. I, I had a chance to dive in on a lot of it before. And so we'll talk about what I found in here. We'll answer your questions. But for context for everyone else listening, uh, why don't you take a minute or so and just kind of, who are you? Uh, what do you do? What's your business model? And um, I want you to talk about the the Impact Club part two a little bit, because that to me you know, is one of the most important things that, that uh, entrepreneurs should be doing. It's really cool. You're doing it, but who are you? Where are you from? What's your business model? Uh, talk about the impact club part, and then we'll break down what you've done so far. Cool. Yeah. Again, thanks for having me. Um, I'm Robert Grand out of Eugene. I, I co-founded um, Grand Realty with my brother. Actually, we kind of did a reset a couple of years ago um, and co-founded it with with my brother, Ricky. So that's who went down to Carrot Camp. I wanted to go, but I lost the, toy, the coin toss on that one. <laughs> as good to go. And I had some other stuff anyways that it just wasn't going to really kind of allow me to go. But I kind of I want to go to the next one for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so we base primarily um, in Eugene, Lane County. So north of Roseburg, we do do some stuff occasionally down in Roseburg where you're at, but it's pretty rare. Like yep. we'll, we'll do some stuff up in Portland, but you know, I started just as a real estate agent, um, in 2012, hurt my knee on a fire. And, uh, my mom, who was an agent at the time, I was sitting there at home going, man, if, you know, I, I thought I was kind of like Superman before I just run around on a fire, jump off and do every, anything I want and put out fires. Cause that was my life. Mm-hmm. And so it was kind of, it was kind of crazy. I jump off a ladder one time with my pack and gear on, which is about, you know, 80 pounds. And I felt a pop in my knee and I was just like, the heck was that? Hmm. I, you know, your adrenaline is flowing so hard. You don't even care. You're just still going for it. And then afterwards I was like dragging my leg around. So after that, I ended up being out for five months with a knee surgery, got that all repaired. And while I was down, I was just like, man, I, 
what if, what if I couldn't go back to work? You know? So my mom's not, she wasn't really like a super compassionate person. She, she was more of the hard knocks mom. She's like, well, you better figure it out. She goes, why don't you get your real estate license and, and get this done? So that way you at least have a backup plan. So I was like, it's the best idea I've heard. So it kind of took off from there. Um, and I really got into it with her and I really liked, you know, doing real estate. And so then, you know, I, I worked on it for um, a lot of years there, kind of like probably four or five years where I was just kind of doing my thing, working with her and then she passed away. So I ended up going over to Keller Williams and I learned a lot at Keller Williams about how to run a team and how to build a business. And so it was a really cool, cool process, but, but something was missing um, in, in the whole thing. I, it wasn't super... I didn't really want to do the cold calling and, and all the stuff that you do uh, to be kind of, you know, a Keller Williams style agent yep. Love the model, love everything that they do there, respect all the Keller Williams people. They're super awesome, but it just wasn't my style. You know, I was kind of more of an independent person, entrepreneurial. Mm. Um, so that kind of shifted me. I started thinking about investments. And so my brother and I got together right about that time. And we're like, Hey, we're going to make a run with this and start working on investments and stuff like that. So, so, you know, typically on a given year, Actually, up until we had a carrot site, I didn't even have a website, so which is pretty good. <laughs> and I just worked word of mouth, you know, uh, as as a fire captain, you know, for Eugene Springfield, I, I could do a lot of business just by meeting people and doing all that type of stuff. So mm -hmm. we close, you know, 40, 45 transactions a year just by people calling us on the phone. Didn't have to do a lot, you know, on top of that. And so that's kind of where we're at with that. A um, couple of years ago, I realized something else was missing from our business. When we started, it was like I just wanted to completely shift the business around. Mm -hmm. And one of it was, part of it was just giving an impact and having an impact in our local community. And so that's what kind of founded Impact Club, you know, with Ryan Fletcher, who you know, uh, we started that. I was one of the first impact clubs that launched, uh, been on board with Ryan for a couple of years before that, before it kind of took off. But before that, I went up in, a, in one cold January with Ryan. We did this thing uh, where we did like a thousand dollar donation and we had like a one day breakdown session, kind of a mastermind. And we pulled all the, the money. It was about $10,000 and gave it to this project called the Clarity Water project. I think that's what it was at the time. So that was kind of like the first kind of like concept, I think of impact club and how that kind of roll. And he kind of took it and ran from there and kind of made it to what it is today, which is mm -hmm. really cool. So today, you know, we've donated over 94,000 to the local Eugene community, um, mm -hmm. Lane County area, all the money stays local, which is super awesome. Um, and a hundred percent of the donations go to the charity. So there's no overhead or anything like that. How grand realty, um, is a part of that is grand really sponsors like the events and stuff like that. And so, mm -hmm. but we don't really talk about it much. It's just one of those things that we know we lock away and we're like, this is our impact that we have on the community. I'm the founder of it. Ricky's one of the co-founders. My wife, Shelly kind of organizes everything. She's an event planner. So it works out really well. And we run these cool events and that's the kind of the thing we want them to be fast. We want them to be cool and we want them to be fun. So I love it. that's, that's kind of where we're at in a nutshell. And, you know, then I kind of started locking onto the care stuff and I was like, God, I really want to give this a try. I want to give this a try. And then of course I did it and got the sites, didn't do anything with it for four or five months and then just started chipping away at it. And I've been doing it for a while, you know, but I, my time's limited trying to get back to it and make sure that I'm dialed on it. But the next six months is all just going to be content for me and Ricky's taking over all the business stuff. So I can just focus on here. So that's kind of where we're at today. Hopefully that's a pretty good <laughs> snapshot. That's perfect. That's perfect, man. And, and guys, one, one of the reasons I wanted, wanted Robert to, to talk about the impact they're making is because that's one of the big things for me, you know, is how do you build a business that does give you freedom, flexibility, grows those finances so you can make an impact. So it's, it's been really cool seeing what they're doing and you guys can do it too. Go back and listen to the episode of the carrot cast with Ryan Fletcher. Um, yeah. Uh, we talk about the impact club a little bit, not a lot in there, but Ryan's a, a genius. Uh, awesome dude. Yeah. So let's do this, man. Let's dive in. So to recap things with people, you've done some stuff with carrot and we'll, we'll, yeah. I'll show the website. So if you guys are watching the, the video version, you'll be able to see this stuff. Um, you guys on the investment side started PPC. Did you guys get that one deal closed? The one in Oak Ridge yet? Oh yeah. Yeah. We've, uh, we closed that one. We rehabbed it. Um, we actually ended up keeping it, you know, just looking at the, the tax swing on that was going to be huge. Huh. It was one of the other things that we kind of run into. It's like, you know, we timed it. We, we started pushing towards more of the Burr method, mm -hmm. um, and just being opportunistic, I guess I would say in our flipping, but mm -hmm. that one, um, you know, we're going to pay a lot in taxes. We're like, oh, we could keep it. And we end up getting an amazing rent out of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, we paid, it was, it was a, 
was the best deal I've actually gotten in a long time on a house, which is amazing. It was 103,000 is what we closed this place on. Just needed to be updated. Mm-hmm. We screw into it about 35, 40,000 with private money and everything. Uh, we're in the process of refining it right now so we can keep it long term. Uh, I think our loan's going to be, you know, 150. We might cash out a little bit to have, you know, take some of that principal to roll it down the road. And that's kind of mm-hmm. what we're figuring out. And, you know, six months ago, I didn't even know about that method. So, yep. so I'm new to the investment world. So we're, we're going to start taking chunks of money with that and building up our capital that way. So it's tax free on that end and keeping our rentals long term. Um, but yeah, so we get 1500 a month out of rent on that thing, which is amazing. And our payment's going to be, I think, you know, rated a thousand or something like that. Dude, so that's a good win, man. Cash flowing like a king. I love it. And so that one, let's, let's kind of break down what you have had a chance to do now. So I'm, I'm looking at your site and okay. I'll, sh- I'll share the site right now. Um, and mainly for like, now everyone listen to this. I'm just going to be talking to Robert the whole time now. So, okay. um, I'm going to be, I'm going to share the site right now. And so you have had a chance to, ah, let me get this down here. So we're going to primarily focus on the, the grand realty side. So on the, on the, on the investor side, there it is right here. Uh, there are a couple things like all kind of, that's not the investor side. Where'd it go? Da, 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 da. There it is, man. Too many tabs open, dude. Okay. So the investor side of things is this URL and you guys are using the, the hemlock design, which yeah. is cool because in the, in the Eugene market, there's not really many, if anyone using this. And that's one of the first things I would suggest to people is a lot of people say, how do I stand out? First thing I would do y'all is like Google, you know, whatever search phrases you're wanting to rank for, click all the top rankings, the, t- the first 10, and just see which carrot design is going to help you stand out the most. And this yeah. one definitely is going to help you stand out in the Eugene market. I like the picture you've got there. It's clearly Eugene with the, with the, with Autzen stadium on there for U of O. Yeah. Um, your, your button here is really good. This is just some, some good stuff I'm validating here. The button's good. It's big, which is our, our design. But one good thing about it, it you kind of match it up a little bit. So it's complimentary with your branding, but it stands out. Like a lot of people will do the button color so it blends in with everything. And one okay. of the aims is you need to make it so it, it stands out okay. uh, from everything else. And I kind of... I kind of use something I call like the grunt test or whatever. Or if you take your eyes and like make them blur on, on purpose, you know, and you pull away... Um, the thing that should really stand out if you're making your eyes blur, the thing that should really stand out is your call to action area. Wow. And okay. in, this, in this circumstance, it does because the button's a good color, which is great. Um, if you want to do the SEO side of things, man, with this, like so I'll spend about five minutes on this. Um, I don't think you guys have really updated the content on the homepage from our stock content. The image is there. Wow. There's a little bit of content updated. But if you guys are wanting to get that ranked higher in Google, that's probably the first thing I would do, man, is just spend 30 minutes, 40 minutes or whatever, just going through each paragraph and kind of going, cool. Like what, what are they saying here? Let me rewrite it in my own words. Okay. What are they saying here? Let me rewrite it in my own words and ah, okay. try to make it. So it's you know, at least 30 to 60% different than the template. Um, the ideal, like there's always debate on this. The yeah. ideal is it's hundred percent unique content, right? That's yeah. ideally right. But what I like to say is, well, what are people actually going to do? Like what's the, what's the lowest resistance thing that people will actually do that will also get them a result. And what we found is when we update 30 to 50% of the content, Google is still looking at it as different. So that's okay. kind of why, why I use that number. Gotcha. A um, couple other things just to, that I noticed earlier, and then we'll bounce to your agent side okay. uh, that, that could help incru- in, increase your authority and credibility even more on the investor side. Yeah. Uh, Cause you guys are doing PPC right now. And I did see you are getting, you're getting consistent leads. It's a smaller yeah. market. So it's not like 20 leads a, a day, but right. consistent leads is PPC the primary way you're driving traffic to that investor side right uh, now. Yeah. That's the only way I think that it's, it's getting traffic right now. Okay. And with the leads you guys have coming in, are you guys getting any more, um, any more headway in any of them? Have you closed, closed any more deals oh, yeah. after that first one? We have, um, two right now that we're running through a foreclosure process that we have going on um, that we kind of handle that we're working with a, a negotiator right now. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna have two more great deals on houses. Uh, cool. And then another another one that came in the other day that I got to get an offer back to is a, a duplex. So, I mean, we're, we're consistently like, I, I feel like, you know, with the amount of time that we have to spend on it right now, uh, I feel like it's pretty good. I love it. Uh, but yeah, so we should close that out. And I picked up uh, another house that I already purchased, um, you know, in Springfield as a, another rental too from that. It was actually, it was a really good when I picked it up for 175, you know, 175 K it's probably worth 250. We're getting ready to, we put a renter in that and we're going to refinance that one here mm. pretty soon. So 
I love it. Yeah. So they're, I mean, they're, it's, it's producing well for sure, which is pay-per-click. Um, and I just started going back through the, the Facebook master, um, class, the leads class. And I got to that and got to the part where it said you should have, uh, your follow-up system in place. <laughs> I was like, just go back to here and go back to the start, get your follow-up system in place. Cause I was like, that's been our biggest thing. I was like, okay, so our follow-up system's not in place to keep, you know, keeping up with people. So, cause we got a lot of leads in the back that we've just let them go or, or I didn't necessarily think, um, taking them from the, you know, investment side, if they didn't fit the cash mold, yep. I didn't think trying to transition them over to the grand realty side, just to the retail sales side. I kind of miss that coming from a real estate background. You tend to be one track mind, you know, yep. kind of have a one track or a one plan. And so just trying to re-engineer myself to have like, you know, solve this problem. What are the, what are the solutions regardless of where it comes in from? So oh, nice. I bet like on the real estate side of things, by not taking some of the cash deals that didn't quite fit the cash mold for us um, and, and not transitioning them or attempting to transition them over. I bet we've probably left a hundred thousand dollars on the table this year. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's one of the things I'm writing some notes. I'll give you these notes afterwards cool, so uh, on the investor side and the agent side. I would definitely do that. So have, have a way to do dual offer. Yeah. Where, where you're presenting to them, Hey, our, our aim is to really, uh, our, our aim is to help you solve your problem. And there's a couple different ways to do that. One of them is listing on the market, uh, which, which tends to help you get the highest, you know, the highest value for your home. Uh, of course there's the amount of time with the listing and then they're showing the property. And then there's of course, um, our service, our, our commissions and everything that's worked in, in with that. And that's one route to do it. So if, if you'd rather wait and get the most that you can, Excellent. Um, but if speed and convenience is really important to you and you'd rather just kind of have a check and walk away from it and you're willing to, you're willing to take a, a fair discount for that convenience and speed, then we have this other option where we can actually buy the property from you too. Um, and here's, here's another thing that could work well for you guys too, since you guys do have some experience in the rehab side of it also and you're an agent and an investor is some of the, some of our really successful clients who are doing both. They're actually approaching some, some of the clients where they know, man, this is a home run. If they just put 20 K or 30 K into this deal, like this is what we would do afterwards, but they'll go in and say, Hey, we can either buy it for X and here's what we're going to do. We would then take our money and put it in and do this and do this and probably take us six months until it's sold, whatever, you know, for us to get right. our profits. But right. they're, they're doing another model where they're actually going in there and saying, or we can do it this way. I can list your house. I can list your house. We can sell it for, you know, whatever the market can yield for it at the top. Um, but then I will put up the 20 K or whatever, and I'll bring in my, uh, my construction crew. And then we will actually do the repairs and then we will list it on the market and then find some, some, some sort of a way to share in that extra at the end. So rather than just listing the property for your traditional 3% or whatever it is, you might be able to get 10, 20% on the back end by getting a share of the profits as an agent by doing the repairs for them, increasing the value and selling at a higher price. And yeah. And that's there. actually, I mean, that's exactly what we do on the, Perfect. on the real estate side um, of things. We, that's that exact process. We call it. it the value driven approach. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I practice. One of the things I practice with Ryan and, and a group of those guys. And, and, and it was just that transition, like, you know, just not recognizing, I think like mm -hmm. that I should be giving the dual offer at all times mm -hmm. saying like, well, you know, and giving them that opportunity to make that happen. And so, and that's what kind of led me, um, like a couple of months ago to at least put the, get a cash offer now. Yep. So trying to transition that maybe as a way of telling myself like, Hey, you know, I need to make sure that I, I'm, I'm giving that opportunity to people, um, at least on the website. So it reminds myself to be doing yep. it. So that's, that's, that's a transition that we would want to really merge together for sure. So that, that's good advice. Thank you. Cool. I love it. I love it. Last couple of things on the, on the investor side, then we'll bounce over to the agent side okay. um, as you can. Uh, try to get photos for each of your testimonials uh, and, and the research that we've found in it, and it really does work really well is, and you'll find this with your, with yourself as a consumer is testimonials. There, there's different levels and layers of um, impact the testimonial can have. The lowest level is just a testimonial with the person's initials, right? DK or whatever it is. And then the next level up is a testimonial with no image, no video, which is a person's name. And then you can kind of up level it. We have other resources I can get you where it shows the ideal format of a testimonial. So I'm gonna write down some resources. Cool. Um, yeah, that's a really good idea. And then, you know, of course, like we didn't even think about getting like a video testimonial before. So yeah, and if I, I wouldn't pressure you on that, but if you yeah. can, like those are those are great. If you can do that. If not, here's kind of a hack 
is uh, get a picture with those clients, ideally, right? Get a picture with those clients with you or with the house, and that's the best. But then put it there in the testimonial thing so people can see it's a real person. This is actually Robert or Ricky shaking that person's hand, so it's not like a stock photo off the internet. You know, the more real you can make that, the better, because people are always trying to find reasons to not trust a company. And the more reasons you can give the stack on to trust you, the more that you're actually going to see your lead to close ratio increase. So we, we found with a lot of our higher end clients where just by beefing up the trust and credibility on the site, your lead to close ratio increases. So not just your leads in your site, but you actually close more of those leads into a deal. Um, and then I would also put where it says Nick McKenzie. I know this sounds funny, but I would even like qualify who is Nick McKenzie. I would put, uh, yeah. I would put dash Eugene home seller. Oh, okay. Cool. Cause then people see or Springfield home seller, or if you sell right. or if you buy and sell in different cities or different town or whatever, I would put those in there cause it helps to qualify that. So that's a little hack there and then get your up, your about page upgraded a little bit. Okay. Cool. The, uh, the about page you have on the realty side, when I, when I bring that up is really good. I mean, you could honestly, if I were looking to do it and just kind of do it quick, I'd probably just take a lot of the content you've already got over here and okay. just move it over. You know, just move a lot of the content over. It shows okay. your faces, people feel connection, impact. That's awesome, right? I love that, dude. I would just like take most of that stuff and just copy it right over to the. Okay, that, the that's a question thing. I had because you know when you have like our primary business is Grand Realty and we offer you know the the cash house buying thing, which mm -hmm. we went back and forth. Should it be branded on its own? Should it be its own thing, or should it be morphed into keep morphing into our our company? But that adds to confusion, you know. So then we kind of settle on let's just. Eugene house buyers keep the logo simple like you see it and there's just going to be those connections between the two is that right do you think or yeah I, I think that's fine and what what a lot of people will do is they'll have different brands for their home buying okay. side of things and the agent side of things so it could be grand property buyers okay. or Eugene house buyers you know or whatever I, th I think it's your choice it, it just okay. depends on what you want to brand you know okay it's your choice, but I would definitely get the more than anything. It's the faces. It's the, it's the warm fuzzy stuff. Cause the number three most visited the webpage on all of our sites. Like when, when we look at our data, it's been like this for years. I've been trumpeting this for years. It's always the about page. Yeah. And it's cause people land in your site and they first land there and they look at the homepage and they go, cool. I've got this problem. Does it look like this company can solve the problem? Well, yeah, I've got a house to sell. It looks like they buy houses in Eugene. They pay, fair offers. There's no commissions and fees. Cool. looks mm -hmm. like they have a service that can likely solve my thing. And then it's like, well, how does it work? And so that's, that's why our nav structure is structured this way. It's in the exact okay. order of prospect thinks of those things. Oh, and eventually okay. they'll make it to, well, is this a company I want to work with? Testimonials, our company, things like that. So those little tweaks, man, will definitely beef it up. The last thing to do on the investor side, but this is also a tip for both the agent side and the investor side. Do you have, um, I know you've got the Facebook course with us. Do you have a retargeting? campaign in place right now for um this? not yet that's i just got the I've, I've had the pixels installed when i originally got the the thing and now i'm going back and building the ad perfect for, building the ads for that so that's perfect right there yeah. and then it said if you don't have your you know if you don't have your follow-up sequence dialed then go back and do that so just got the we use podio for all of our transaction stuff and so we're able to go into the carousel it was really cool just connect it through zapier cool. and then it was able just to lock it so it sends it as a lead there and then adds it to our database inside there so now it's just there's a lead and now it works out perfect so that's dialed and we'll be able to follow up with them beautiful um, from that point so now i'm this week I'll be moving back to the Facebook retargeting campaign. Okay. That's perfect. And yeah, just follow the training in there kind of high level. The things I like to do, uh, just keeping it really simple is what you're trying to do is I, I actually consider Facebook retargeting a follow up also, right? Because you've, uh, you've got email follow up, you've got text follow up, whatever follow up you're going to put over there. You, you decide what, what's best for you and your market. Um, but then I, I consider retargeting follow up because what's happening is they land in your site and let's say they opt in or they don't opt in. I get, I get a chance now every single day to serve them up content in front of them to continue. To oh, yeah. And so a couple of things that will be useful as you do that and you just figure out where in the timeline makes sense for you to carve out time and resources to do it okay. is um, I would do something for sure. That's kind of like the direct call to action ad, but it's okay. something with your guys' face on it. Hey, this is Robert, you know, with Eugene house buyers or whatever it is. And, uh, and you might be looking to sell your house. Maybe you inherited a home, maybe it's fire damage, maybe, you know, one of these four reasons and we're local and we're really proud that we've been able to work with lots of home, you know, 
uh, lots of, of, of house sellers through our, our real estate agency side of things and our direct house buying side of things. And we can help you in these ways. If you're still looking to, to sell, just click this link or give us a call or text and go to our website and submit that. So putting up a video like that and then also test one that's just a straight up image. Um, and then the rest of them are going to be pretty much like testimonials. And so that's, that's where part of the importance will come up of starting to get pictures, starting to get videos as you can. Okay. Um, a good hack, man, is if you didn't get a picture of that property or that, or if you didn't get a picture of that seller, like with Nick McKenzie, mm -hmm. got the address, dude, I would just go, go drive by that place or go to Google images, screenshot yeah. the ad, like screenshot the picture of the house ah, and cool. put it in there. And so right. they, then, the, then people will have context. Oh, my house kind of looks like that. Right. It's not a big fancy house or it's a tore right. up house or. Yeah. Yeah, whatever it is. So cool. yep, that'd be a good yeah, that's actually a really, that's really good. I mean, I could go back by and, and snap good photos or we probably have photos actually. Yeah. And like but some kind of my hack is I'll just use, I use just Google maps, man, like street view. I'll like street <laughs> address, screenshot it yeah. and I'll throw it on the site if I can't grab yeah. it. Slick. Cool. Nice. So as far as the agent side of things, um, yeah. you know, you're using the hemlock design, which I like, you got a good Eugene picture. I think this is great, man. What, what we'll do if you're cool with it, um, there's probably not a lot of traffic to this site yet, but as you get more traffic, it'll be useful is I will launch a split test, um, to get heat maps on your webpage. We'll do it. It won't cost you anything. And cool. then that way we can see what percentage of people that land in this are actually clicking to get a cash offer. Yeah. Um, and you'll be able to really see, uh, you know, how, how that's working. An another kind of cool thing you can do to, to give yourself some, some inside knowledge too, on whether this thing is getting clicked is I'm hovering over this get a cash offer link and, and down in the bottom right down here, of course, it shows what URL it's linked to, which is your Eugene House Buyers one. Yeah. What I would do is over here in Eugene House Buyers, I would go down here to campaigns. Okay. And I would create a special tracking link. Um, my internet today is a little bit wacky, but yeah. I, would, I would create a special tracking link. I'd create a new one in here that just goes to your homepage, but do this from Grand, Grand Realty homepage. Okay. So Grand Realty homepage, I'll drive to the homepage. So it should bring it up and I should be able to select the homepage. I didn't even know that did that. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'll select home, type. I mean, I'm, I'm probably going to do other with this one and I'll just do Grand Realty yeah. home link. Okay. And then source would be uh, same thing. It's other. It's, it's grandrealty.com. Okay. Uh, so what is that URL? That one's it's grand R G. R -G yeah. Yeah. Cool. So this is a cool thing. I can create that link and then I would actually go swap out and use this link instead. So use this okay. fancy link you've got here, yeah. that link instead. So that way you can pop over here and go, how many clicks and leads am I getting from that site? Oh, that's um, super cool. Yeah. yeah Cause yeah. somebody might pop into, there's probably a higher problem that we're more known as grand realty and they would just get there and they might be like, what's this cash offer thing about? And, I'm going to get a lot of organic traffic through that. So mm -hmm. exactly. And this way, dude, like that's the cool thing with that's this cool. campaigns features. You can now tell you're like, well, is that button working? Like, should I have the button there? Right? I didn't even think of, I mean, I didn't, I don't know where this one came from. Must've been something that, well, I don't know if he did that, but yeah. maybe me. That, <laughs> that might've been that's Brendan cool. when Brendan yeah. was, oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. It was probably him. So probably you can see right here. Hey, this particular one, of course, the, the, the stat this is a question that does come up from people. It's like, Hey, my stats from Facebook ads and from Google ads don't match carrot stats. You can never get stats to match up no matter what tools you're using because right. they all, their, their scripts all fire at different times. So some of them are going to track the, the, the visitors, some aren't or whatever, but this is a cool feature, man. Use that for sure. So if you're doing, if yeah. you're doing your Facebook ads, mm -hmm. come in here and do that. So all of those retargeting ads, create okay. a new one call this whatever you want to call it, uh, you, you could test it. Like you could have a new link for every ad or every campaign, however, however granular you want to get to know, Hey, is this working or isn't, is it not? Huh. You, you just come down here and select, well, it's a retargeting ad. It's a Facebook ad. And what this essentially does is we've, we've taken Google's what's called a UTM builder, which creates fancy tracking links. We've taken that and built it all into our system and made it simple. Wow. Yeah, it's kind of cool. That is really cool. Okay. So let's pop over here, man. I want to answer your question. So what are your primary questions? And I've got a couple of suggestions for you. Um, so the top question I had is, you know, so like I, I mentioned before, we service kind of like Lane County in general. 
Mm -hmm. uh, work to a few other areas, but Eugene Springfield kind of rolls one kind of as almost one big metro area. Yep. And so my question, like we've always branded, we actually had it branded as Eugene, then went to Eugene Springfield, and now we're back at Eugene. And I was just kind of like, well, like what's the right thing to do there? You know, it's like city specific, and because I know that people will know that we work in all those areas, but you know, yeah, am I? Am I keeping am i am i eliminating the city of springfield or the people there that might hit that and be like well they're only eugene you know yep for sure and the effects on google like i wasn't sure what you know my effects were because now i'm worried like i have the number one ranking you know for like sell my house now i'm like i don't want to touch anything you know and, <laughs> now, <laughs> yeah. and lose well, that so no that's that's true yeah so you've got the number one ranking for sell my house in eugene right was that yeah. the was that what it was cool yeah, i think we're in the 20s we went we've been climbing as as agents recently too so mm -hmm. um kind of up and down but yeah. yeah so i've got this there's a tool that we use we're gonna be baking in some of this data inside the carrot sites sometime soon this is pretty cool where it like grabs a lot of the keywords you're ranking for okay. um now it's not it's not grabbing some of the ones that you know that you're ranking for there, but it's kind of cool. So real estate agent Eugene, Oregon. Okay. It's climbing pretty good. So it's ro rose in ten yeah. spots recently, and it's it's on page three right now, twenty okay. number twenty five. But the yeah. good indication is there's some things that are that are moving up. So that might be a good one there. And I'll answer your question here in a second. But homes okay. for sale in South Eugene, Oregon. Oh, just well, perfect, man. So that that's one of the things I like to do there is is figure that out. It's like our or, or is that the home page is starting to rank for that? Is it my location page? If if you end up seeing that those things are popping up in rankings, okay. um, that's really, really good indication to to let it kind of sit there for a little bit. Okay. Let me look at this real quick. So anytime that you create a location page, cool, you're using this. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime yeah. You, you create a location page that you want to get ranked in Google, always track it in the SEO tracker. Um, because then what happens is is uh here's kind of my rule of thumb with seo in in the pages and i'll answer eugene and springfield question is okay. when you launch a new page especially when a website's kind of newer and it doesn't have a lot of backlinks in it yet and uh -huh. i'll show you kind of what your backlink profile looks like and i'll give you some uh some simple things you can do over the next month or two cool but um before you have a lot of backlinks it might take a month two months three months sometimes up to six months for the more competitive phrases for you to start to see some really good movement on those keywords um, the more niched it is, the easier it's going to be to rank for it and the faster, right? So, you know, uh, swimming, you know, homes with the swimming pool on the west side of Eugene, if that's something people are searching, you're going to be able to get that ranked faster if there's a good content on there. Um, and so, what I, what I usually do if I'm trying to determine, hey, should I put in both of those words, both of those towns on the homepage, should they be their own, their own, their own thing? I usually go to Google and start, start typing what I, what I would type if I'm looking for stuff in that market. And then I go to the bottom and I look under the, the related uh, searches and I go, hey, what's Google telling me? Are, are they mixing in Springfield and Eugene kind of interchangeably on some of these things? Um, I'm just going to do this. Let's say Eugene homes for sale. It's not always like 100% accurate, but usually you'll start to see an interchanging of that city. And, and that is an indication that Google sees it as the same thing. Um, if you don't see an interchanging of the city, it's still fine to have it on the same page, but okay. you should probably have location pages for each. Um, if, if you're, if uh, you're going to split them up, but okay. this is kind of cool here, man. Like this is what people are searching right now in, in yeah. your market, Eugene homes for sale with mother-in-law. <laughs> hopefully that's, <with, laughs> hopefully that's mother-in-law quarters. It's uh, telling me ADUs are a big thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, man. Uh, yeah, you should get, you should they should be discounting those homes if they come with a mother-in-law, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eugene homes for sale with a pool. Eugene homes for sale near campus. Oh, that's, that's a good one. Cool. Yeah. Okay. That'd be a great, okay, that'd be a great page to set up. So as you're wanting to do some more of these niches, start to think about what are the types of homes I like to sell? Um, who are the types of clients I like to work with? And then start to type some of those phrases in. You're going to see what people are searching. So okay. I'm just going to type Eugene homes for sale and just see once again, if it's starting to interchange and, and intermix the Springfield words and some of people's title tags and the bottom down here. Yes, look at this. So Eugene Homes for Sale, mm -hmm. house, houses for sale in Springfield, Oregon. So it tends to pull both ways. Yeah, Google thinks it's pretty much the same thing. They, they know that they're very related. So I think the way you've got it works um, as far as having your Eugene, Oregon real estate agent, and then you had Springfield in here somewhere. Oh, that was your... 
That was yeah, this one. That was your sell your house page. Or maybe it was locations or something. Yep, it was this one right here. This is the one that was ranked number one in Google for you. Oh yeah, yeah. So leave this, dude. Like, okay. since, since this one is since this one is straight up selling your house, leave yeah. this one. Well, dude, okay. one thing that most agents are not doing that you, you can kind of determine where over the next year do you want to do this. You don't got to cram it all in in one quarter, of course. Okay. You're gonna pick every quarter. Hey, what do I want to go after this quarter? Right. One thing most agents aren't doing is they're 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 not creating location pages for sellers. They're mainly creating location pages for buyers. So they're going out there creating the uh, homes for sale near, you know, homes for sale in Eugene near the campus, you know, land for sale Eugene. Those are all great. Continue to do those. Yeah. But what they're not doing is creating niches for the sellers, like That's we do on the investor side. The investor side, we get we niche the crap out of the seller pages. Really? Right? Yeah, for sure. Um, but it, but agents, we forget about it, and they usually just have one page for agents. So keep this page here. But if there are types of houses in Eugene that you love to be able to work with more of those sellers. Yeah. If there are situations sellers are going in that you'd love to work with them more. Um, even if it's like motivated house seller phrases that you would usually work with um, on the investment side, okay. as you go, that might be a good strategy to build out some of those and see, right. if, see if there's those like. Um, yeah, that's really um, cool to think about. Cause like, I mean, we focus more on listings mm -hmm. and they tend to just come organically for us versus, um, the website I was, I was actually thinking buyer. So it's glad, I'm glad that you said that because I didn't really, like you said, didn't think about the seller's specific landing pages. Cause mm -hmm. we do have, um, I mean, our niche is we like to clean up people's houses for them. I mean, that's really what we like to add value to their home and, yeah. and convince them to do that. So look at this man. So I typed up sell inherited house and then it, it actually gave me a suggestion, you know, Eugene, oops. So Eugene, Oregon, uh, so okay. that is something people are typing in. Now you can go and look at stats and see how many. It's probably not a million of them, but it's yeah. it's enough that if you land one of those a year, it's amazing. You've got yeah. your ad up there, which is great, but this is kind of cool. Uh, organically, you're on page one for that. Yeah, that's awesome. So there's some ways you can even get that ranked higher. Is cool. Um, start to share up that page on social media a couple times. That okay. gives you some social signals. And if, if possible, you could even use on your, you could even take on your real estate agent website and find a good spot, whether it's on your about page or an article on the agent side of things, uh -huh. link, link to this article okay. as a backlink. Like that would essentially be a backlink. Uh, yeah, start doing that back and forth between some of the good ones. Yep. So okay. that, that would, that would count as a backlink for that page. You don't want to overdo it with links between your sites, but okay. in this case, it might be just a good backlink or two directly to that page that might bump it cool. up higher. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Yep. So if, if you were to start to create pages on the seller side that are niched down into the seller situations, once again, that might be the back half of 2020, you do that or whenever you think that's priority. Then yeah. the cool thing is this is where it gets really powerful, Robert, is you'd have your, your house buying site with carrot on page one, uh -huh. and you'd have your real estate agent site on page one. Um, well, it, it's funny, like for sell my house, Eugene, for a while, uh, the Eugene house buyer site was number two or three. It was like, I had grand realty at number one and then like a month ago, but then all of a sudden it just kind of dropped off the radar. And I was like, Oh, bummer. <laughs> yep. I was like, wham, one, two punch. Yeah. Have it there. So, but yeah, that would be super cool. Having both those avenues right there, just tied up. Yep. And as far as on the investor side of things, why I think that that one bounced out was, your, your homepage, of course, right here, if I look at the title tag, it's sell my house fast, Eugene, Oregon, we buy house, Eugene, that's great. But um, when a site goes live and Google's trying to figure out where is it going to go, it looks at the yeah. content, you know, and then it goes, hey, cool, this is where we think it goes. But then sometimes they kind of re, you know, readjust things and change their mind. It's likely because this content hasn't been customized yet. Okay, cool. Yep. So as soon as you go through and rewrite that content, all and right. make it more unique to you and find other opportunities. Google's going to look at it and go, cool, awesome. We love the site. It's more unique content. And then you'll probably start to see that bump back up. Cool. Yeah. So as far as the Eugene and Springfield one, keep this page as it is. Um, you're good there. But as you go, just figure out where in your plan you want to attract sellers. And then you could maybe create a location page specifically to selling in Eugene, specifically to Springfield. And cool. then maybe, maybe, pages for your top five to 10 situations people sell in, in those markets. Do you, know? do you just keep stacking pages up there across the top there? Or do you like, I was, I was in like one of the other questions. Cause you know, mm -hmm. like how you have the drop down menus of everything. Do you need to have them on the menu like that? Or do you, should you, or should you, know, you, you don't, you don't need to. And, and here's a good example. Like if we were to go to Zillow, 
Um, let's just do real estate. Let's do homes, homes for sale. You know, Eugene, Oregon, and of yeah. course Zillow for for the for the broad phrases in a whole city. It's going to be really hard to unseat Zillow for the whole city. Like sell my house fast, or not sell my house fast. It's going to be really hard to unseat homes for sale. Insert city. You 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 know, it's going to be almost impossible to unseat Zillow. Where where we unseat Zillow is in the niches. And here's what I want to show you real quick. So Zillow okay. has millions of pages, right? Right. Zillow has millions of pages, and so. You don't you don't see up on on their homepage or any or any of these pages where it links to all mil, one million of the pages in the drop down. Oh, right. What's, what's most important is on your website you find kind of what are the silos that I could, that are a make sense navigation path. Now at the start, when your website's small and it doesn't have many pages, exactly how you've set it up is great. Like there's not a lot of pages yet, it's fine, right? But eventually, right. you might go. You know what? I am going to go and build out dozens or hundreds of pages over the next two to three years. And then at that point, you have to go, okay, I need to kind of restructure the way this is organized. So it might be locations that might be, um, you might say like homes for sale, West Eugene, homes for sale, East Eugene, homes for sale, like whatever your primary five or six, you know, top, uh, your, your primary five or six niches are or areas you want to do in. Okay. That's what I would do there. Okay. And then I would do the rest of these as like sub pages to it. Right. Okay. So maybe luxury homes is one of your niches. You would do luxury homes for sale, Eugene, Oregon as the page. Okay. And, then, and then I would create sub pages to that that are luxury homes in this neighborhood, luxury homes for sale in this, in this country club, luxury uh, homes for sale over here. So get really niched out inside those different areas. Cause that's, that's what Zillow can't really tackle. Cause they don't know the community as well. Mm -hmm. as like, I know it cause I know everything in this area, what communities, what, what streets good, what streets not good, you know, mm -hmm. inside those. It, it, exactly. And I'll give you an example once again with, with Zillow here too. So you can see kind of their URL structure. It's mm -hmm. their website.com. And then, and then they're going to cool. What bucket now do we bucket this into? Well, it's the Eugene, Oregon bucket. Okay. And I'm saying awesome. What bucket now is foreclosures within Eugene, Oregon. Ah, cool. So that's how their URL is. So yours would be similar. Yours would be your website.com forward slash luxury or luxury homes for sale or something like that. Mm -hmm. Eugene. And then forward slash you know, this country club. Yeah. Okay. Something yeah. Like I see what you're saying. Right. Yeah, cool. Um, but for now it's fine until it starts to get kind of crazy for you. Yep. Um, an another thing's kind of being on, on here, y your video is great, dude. I would keep doing that stuff. Um, let's see, you got that. This is something you could reach out to our team t to do if you, if you wanted it this way okay. is we could add in another layer or two, another row or two of properties that way kind of has some more properties on here. Um, Cause we can do that pretty easily and that's something they could do for you. Okay. Yeah. What's uh, what are the questions you have top of mind, man? Um, I, so you, the city landing pages, that makes sense. You know, the, um, I had that on my list, you know, how to, how to break those things down. I think we covered that. Mm -hmm. Um, niching, you know, that's probably the next thing. I know you kind of said niche into things. We our our goal is to niche into investing. Um, do you think that's a smart niche? You know, as a real estate agent, do you think that would be an avenue? Because we our number one goal is to start working with more investors, people that kind of want to do things like we do. Um, and our our primary goal is to take them, you know, help them buy properties, help them add value to their properties, and mm -hmm. then either manage them or help them sell them. You know, so that's kind of that's kind of where one of the avenues we want to go just because we love investing so much. And so I was just trying to think about that. Like, you know, is, would that be a smart niche as a real estate company? I, I, I love it, man. Kind of my philosophy with this stuff, Robert is, is what, to, to pick niches, do this, what transactions or types of properties or sellers would you love to do more of? Cause you like working with those people. You, you understand it. You're good and pay you well. Right. right. So like, you love to do them. You'd love to work with those sellers or buyers or properties and they pay you well. If you can find those, I would go all in on the niching. And then, then the next thing that I do is I just go to Google and I just type up like, what would an investor type into Google? Like, what would they type in? So the first thing that came to mind for me was that investment properties in Eugene, right? Yeah. Um, so investment properties in Eugene, Oregon. Okay, cool. I'm going to click it and I'm just going to start to kind of get in the mind in, in the psyche of my client and go, cool, what else is it out there on the internet right now that I can just beat? I can beat with better content. I can build authority in this. Are, is there an authority right now in Eugene that's owning online? And I can tell you right now, the answer is no. There's a bunch of agent uh, websites here, but my guess is when I, when I click on some of these, they're probably just going to be like 
what most of them usually are. Right. Which is like, hey, I'm a real estate agent. Look at my pretty face and look at all the same properties everyone else has and not really much about me and my expertise. Um, That'd be cool then because we could niche in there, shoot the videos for it, and then that's going to be the, a, a pretty good connector, I think, for us. And it's something that we're just truly interested in. Like we like talking to investors. We like working on the projects with them. We like following it. It's just a lot of opportunity there that I see. Plus, you know, the investors tend to buy multiple properties. Yeah. Um, so exactly. You know, repeat that, and then, and then the next question they always have is, "Who who do you know for property management?" That's one of the reasons why we got into property management. Mm -hmm. That that kind of leads me to my next question. Um, if if you want to go there. Uh, yeah, let's let's go there after this one one thing. So what I, what I usually do when I'm doing this, I'll take out like a, a notepad, Apple Notes, or whatever it is. Um, and then I'll, I'll type up, I'll, I'll copy and paste this phrase in here that, I, that an investor would type in as long okay. as Google gives it to me as a suggestion as I'm typing, right? right? And, then, and then I go down and scroll to the bottom and I look and see what are other related searches that people are typing. Now, the only reason Google puts these in here is because it knows people are typing these consistently on a... On a uh, okay, right? nice. So I, I would take the ones that are relevant to that niche. Oh yeah, sweet. Like, yeah, I definitely want to sell fourplexes to investors. That'd be cool. <laughs> Um, or multi, I'd love, I'd love to sell multifamily houses to investors or, you know, right here, people are looking for fourplexes in Eugene apparently. So, um, the, these are great opportunities for location pages or niche pages, right? I would, I would liter literally create a page that's called fourplexes for sale in Eugene, Oregon. And e even if, even if you can't pull out in the MLS, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't, if you can't pull out in the MLS, you know, um, actual fourplexes or multi-unit properties that are listed. I would just take a bunch of pictures of properties in Eugene or ones that you've bought or ones that you've worked with or whatever yeah. it is and just kind of put three or four in there just as, as visual representations of properties in Eugene. You're not saying you represent them. You're not saying any of that. You're just saying, Hey, yeah. if you're looking for properties like this and then yeah. I have, a, I'd have a good form on that page that basically says, you know, get on our investment property list. We're the yeah. number one, you know, um, investor friendly agents in, in, in Eugene, check out our content to show da 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 and any, and, and then connect with us so we can help you find the property in this, the suits your needs before anyone else or whatever. You yeah. Copy. That makes sense. Yep. But then w with that, maybe do it as a video post if you want. Okay. So there's five to 800 words in there. There needs to be at least probably five to 800 words on that page to have it be towards even going to have a chance to rank. Okay. Um, and that's where the video post thing comes in. We're recording three to five minute video, three to six minute video. The average person speaks 120 to 160 words a minute. So you take those words out. You take those words out of that five minute video. That's an 800 word article pretty much right there. Yeah, I actually sent, I did a video recently and, and then ran it through the, the carrot process where it kicks you back the transcript and everything. And that was pretty cool. Then I was able to take that and go, okay, tweak here, 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 and here. Made the post, put the video with it. It worked out really slick. Yep. I love it. And so kind of go down and every, every quarter is you want to go, you know what? I want to go really, really deep into this investment niche this quarter. Okay. Just make most of your content about that, that quarter and kind of follow these Google searches and what are people typing in? Maybe I'll click this one now. It says fourplex for sale. And yeah. I'm going to see who else is in here. Kate's okay, the national sites. Okay. So are any local sites making it in on here? Not really. Might be hard to rank for that, but we'll see. I don't know. And then I would just kind of look down in here more. Is there anything else, any other keywords that might be interesting? Homes for sale near, near University of Oregon. That might be an investor. It might be someone that's yeah. a student, a parent of a student that's looking to, to buy there. Um, you know, multifamily houses in Springfield. That's another page. I would create another page on that what kind of stuff. You yeah. do. Yep. Gotcha. Cool. What was your other question, your follow-up question? Um... My next question, oh, is it role property management? Would you, because um, that's one of the things that we do, should that be a separate site or should we just keep, should we meld that into this site? Mm -hmm. Like it could just be a page on the site. I was thinking, I was working through this the other day. I'm like, I could just make it a page on the site. Should it be its own thing? I was like, I just don't really know. Yeah. And I'm like, do we have too many services? Am I crazy? <laughs> you know? what, what's the what's the name of the property management company? Uh, we don't have a name for it. We just use Grand Realty and then, um, you know, because, and, how it's structured at the state level, our principal broker license allows us to have property management. Cool. So we just have it. So we haven't branded it. We haven't done anything with it. And we're just kind of, my brother and I, Ricky, were just chatting the other day, like, do we break it out? Is it its own thing? You know, what can we do with it? And, you know, so it's kind of like, 
And then we were just going to basically take one of the carrot sites because we have another one that, you know, we can add and <laughs> break it down, rebuild it into a property management site mm -hmm. or add a page. Yep. Dude, there's, you can do, you can do either out. So, um, there's benefits of splitting out and there, and there's, there's, there's detractor. So the detractor is now you've got another URL that you've got to, if you're wanting it to rank well in Google, you got to build backlinks for, and you got to get citations for, and you've got to do all that for. So that's a detractor, but also it's, it's a big benefit because now it's another website that if, if those things were done, if the whole thing is focused in on property management, Google's then going to look at that and go, oh, okay, cool. It's very clear what this website's about, property management in Eugene. Right. Uh, the detractor of putting it on your other, on your Grand Realty site is like 2% of your content in that site is going to be about property management. 98% is going to be about buying houses or, or selling your house. Right? right. Okay. So when uh, Google's kind of looking at well, what is this website about, in general, it's going to be more about buying and selling real estate to Google than renting a house. Okay. Or reaching out to you to, to have you rent my house. Um, but what, what I would do is if I were to say, here's the ideal and here's the short term, short term, totally put up a page on this just for property okay. management. Cool. Because you've already got the URL up there. It's already got a handful of backlinks. I think there's five or six that I saw in my search. Mm -hmm. So you've already got a little bit of a jump start there. And it will not hurt you whatsoever to have a page on that. It'll only help okay. have the page on it. And then as you go, uh, let's say four, five, six months out, let's say, Let's say you're looking at it and go, well, it's not really ranking yet. Um, let me do a series of content around how to choose the right property manager in Eugene. You know, let me compare services or whatever content you want to do around property management in Eugene. Let that marinate for two, three, four months more, see if it's catching. If it's not, Google might be thinking, well, too much of the site's about realty stuff and not property management that they're not giving that advantage. So then okay. you can make the determination like, yeah, let's launch our own site for that. Okay, cool. But yeah, that's, that's a good page. plan. I like that. Because, yeah, it's a, it's a beast. I mean, as you know, I mean, getting a site up and running and getting it all dialed takes, takes some time. So, so yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll do that to start and then think about that down the road. And, but, That's yeah, I could see it being its own site one day because it could grow. I mean, we're up to 130 properties now. So, mm -hmm. it's like I, it can keep – and that's inside of a year. So, yep. it, it can quickly grow and become a, a pretty big thing, I think. Um, yeah, I want to type this up and see what – Cause I want to see if people are, I mean, if you have that many properties, people are probably searching for your name around property management, possibly. Um, I don't think a, we don't get a lot of calls on it because it's just, we've just, that's just like through like, uh, seven investors. Mm -hmm. you know? Okay. That was like, that's led me to the belief of realizing that I'd rather work with, you know, 50 people and a, and a thousand properties than a thousand homeowners, you know, yeah. individually, because in your, your span of control, there's a lot better. Oh yeah. Dude, yeah. Here's, a, here's a good little hack you can do. So more and more on the Google side of things, uh -huh. uh, Google rolled out something called trust rank uh, earlier this year. Okay. Uh, it's not impacting every industry, but it is impacting many in the real estate one. It's kind of, it does sometimes it doesn't sometimes in some markets, but what trust rank is, is one of the things that Google's looking at more and more nowadays is not just the backlinks. Backlinks are really important. Uh, the tech stack of the website is critical. Is it, loading, is it loading fast? Is it easy to navigate? All the stuff that we take care of for you. Like that's mm -hmm. just done for you. The backlinks you got to build. But on the trust rank side of it, they're, they're going, is this website and this company trustworthy? And they look at that reviews, um, other things like that. So all things equal, if there was two websites that were battling for the top couple positions and everything else was equal and one had 35 five-star reviews on google and a bunch on facebook and zillow or in uh, zillow the other one had four it's going to give the higher ranking to the one with more online trust okay um, cool. so just as a part of your long-term strategy find yeah. a way to bake into your your process for both the realty side and the home buying side a testimonial process and here's something you can do a couple of things. So uh, to, to get it seated, one thing that I like to do is I, I like to incentivize my clients to do so. And so after you close a transaction, let's say as a, you know, uh, on the real estate agent side of things, you say, Hey, awesome. Um, I, I'm always looking to improve and grow. And you can do this in person if you're there in person or by email or text or whatever, if you're not, okay. but I'm, lo I'm always looking to, to improve and grow. Is there any feedback you have um, about working with us that you really loved? these things working with us and then what are some things we can improve and then people want to give the feedback what a lot of people do investors or agents they ask for a testimonial they say hey can you give me a testimonial people don't naturally like giving testimonials because it's awkward 
But if you ask for feedback, everyone's going to give you feedback. And uh -huh. so, so then, so then take the good things that they said and said, man, that's amazing. I'm so glad we were able to do this for you and that you got that benefit and you enjoyed working with us. Would, would you be able to write that down or could I write that down and send it to you and then just get your approval and then we can leverage that so we can help, we can put it on our website and stuff. So other people that are looking at working with us versus others can kind of see other, your experience. Is that cool? Um, so that'll work a lot of times, but this is what works really good to get your first 10 or 20s. I will give them money. I'll say, hey, awesome. If you're able to uh, go on to Google and Facebook and Zillow or whatever ones you want to do, Google and Facebook, they were probably the primaries. Give them the links to it and say, fill, out, fill us out and give us an honest review of working with us. And we'd be happy to send you a $50 gift card to your favorite restaurant here in Eugene. Cool. And it works really well. And That's awesome. Let's say that you only do 10 or 20 of those. It's going to cost you about 1000 bucks. And if you have 20, 20 more five-star reviews on there, you, you, that, that could be the chance of, or the difference of winning at mm -hmm. one or five or 10 extra clients this next year, which is going to be worth way more than 1000 bucks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's for sure. Yeah, that's a, that's a really, really good plan. Um, I like that. We, we started like a, a while ago. Um, I must have listened to one of your talks or something on that. And then we did do a page, but we haven't pushed it. Uh, I think it's reviewgrandrealty.com, but it's, it's just a page on here somewhere. Cool. Um, but yeah, so it kind of has like a bare bones thing like that, but we need to really push that and get that going. Um, but you know, one other thing, when you said that, um, well, something I thought was really cool recently when I closed on one of our homes, the mortgage lender, I was on a refi on my primary, actually the mortgage lender he had submitted with all the paperwork was like, you know, a paper review form. And so mm -hmm. it's like already there closing. And then, and then the, the escrow lady drops in front of me. She goes, yeah. And they just want you to do this review. And I was like, and write anything um, that, that you could. And then, you know, you said feedback and it said feedback. And so I was like, Oh, that makes sense. Now he can use that, you know, and take it wherever he needs to use it and use it. So maybe when you said that, it connected that up for me and maybe on the real estate side of things, we'll start submitting that, um, at closing. So we have that, so we can get that. And then at the bottom of that say, Hey, if you want to go to review grand realty and get your reward or your, you know, your gift card, you can do the online reviews. It's kind of the next step, you know? So I love it. I love it. And you, you yeah. really only need to, like I said, just bake it into your process. I mean, the more you yeah. get, the better. You want to overwhelm your market with just your trust and authority. Cool. Uh, the more the better there. A Cu couple of things here on your, on your location pages. I saw that you've got some of these, these, these location pages. Uh-huh. Um, oh, yeah, those are horrible. <laughs> those aren't good. Good. I mean, I'll, I'll give yeah. you a quick little tip, and then we have a tutorial that walks you through how to do this, or we have services that can just build all this out. Okay. You guys do more. But um, the thing I always like to do is the same thing. Go to Google and then type in, you know, what someone might type in in that market. And this actually came up as a suggested search. Like I, I typed up, um, I, type, I typed up that and that gave me, that was my suggestion right there. Uh, okay. So like, cool, this is what people are searching. I literally just take that, copy it. And then when I'm going to, cr to create or edit that page, okay. that's, I just paste it in there, dude. Okay. Um, and so that's my title now. And I'm not going to mess up your URL here, but ideally I would probably, I would literally just like take that and make that my darn URL. And okay. yeah. I'm not going to save it, but you can okay. see now it's all in there. And then when you're writing your content, this is kind of that, that five to 800 word, um, that, that five to 800 word uh, rule mm -hmm. that in order to get this to start to really rank up there, you're going to want to have between the 500 and 800 words. And so you can kind of model some of the, the, the ones I'll send you a link you can kind of model some of them. And I would primarily not, I'd primarily talk about how you are an authority in that market and how, how they can you know, buy a house there versus the details of, Hey, there's 14 parks and right. say those things. Those are good. But the things I like to focus on in my content is what are things that my, the other agents can't say, right? They can't say the experience that you've got. They, maybe you right. live in North Gilham and you have right. lived there for 10 years. Say those things. Mm -hmm. um, and mix in as much about the, the area as you want to, but kind of what I, what I look at is they already know about North Gilham. They probably already know that there's cool parks there. They probably already know what school districts it, 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 and if they're searching for right. specifically, you can mention those, but that's not going to sell them to work with you. You need to sell them to work with you. Most agents, uh, location pages just continue to sell them on the location. It's like, well, yeah, but you need to sell them right. location to work with you. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, that one's definitely lacking a little bit on that. So <laughs> you, you get it. And like, so that's something we can do. I think it's 50 bucks a page. If we were to make them for you, 
What's cool. up, Ricky? What's up, man? <laughs> yes, yeah, it'd be 50 bucks a page, or you guys can do them either way. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Um, and we just uh, we just purchased the citation building. Perfect. So that's probably the, the next thing that should be kind of rolling into this site. Um, and, and we've been going through that process, got that all, had a couple of emails back and forth. Um, so I think they said in about three weeks that should all be done on your guys' side of things. So yeah, perfect. Pumped about that. Yeah. And with that, that'll take somewhere between two and five months for Google to really start to recognize those. Okay. It's going to be dozens of different websites and they're kind of over the coming months, they're going to be piecing together this and going, Oh, this is the same company. It's a trust yeah. file. And so right now, if you look at your website, the backlinks you've got, you've got one from your Zillow profile. Great. Yeah. Everybody, if you're an agent, if you have a Zillow profile, put your darn link, your, your website link in there. You've got one from this website. Uh, you didn't get it in there. It's just like they're a scraping tool and they're competitive market research. And then these ones are from your other sites, which is great. So that is going to be one of the big, the, one of the big levers for you, man, that cool. you need to get those backlinks built. So the citation okay. perfect first step. That's going to help with this. And then after that, there's some kind of cool things you can do backlinks locally. Any of the press that you're doing, like mm -hmm. Impact Club stuff, yeah. Find, find ways to get links to your website in that newspaper article on the website. Yeah. Or, yeah. You know, collaborating with that mortgage broker across town. If they have a blog, hey, um, you know, we're, we're working with a lot of investors. You work with a lot of investors. We send you a lot of clients. Would it be cool if I created a video and a piece of content that we post on your blog <clears throat> and uh, we just add value to your prospects? And yeah, you do the same thing on mine or whatever. <clears throat> and then they link to your website from that. It's a really good idea. And yep. a question on that, Trev, is it... Yep. Is it still kind of like the one-way link that really that Google really picks up? Because if you yeah. do the like quid pro quo where it's like link and link, does that does it matter? Yeah, I mean, I would I would definitely prefer the one one-way link. Now, I'm not going to say that not going to say that Google isn't going to give you some sort of credit for yeah. some stuff if if those sites are linking to each other. It so just is that why the blog is like your know, blogs and stuff make the most sense because it's just a one-way. It's associated with material. Yeah. And you're probably going to like in that blog post from that mortgage broker site, you're probably going to link to your homepage. Right. Um, right. yeah. So, and as far as volume on that, you guys don't have to work too hard on it because your market, you're already starting to see some of these rank up there. Right. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm talking like you probably need maybe 20 good backlinks over the next six to eight months. Like wow. I'm not talking a lot. Wow. Not a lot. Okay. Yeah. Yep. It's not, it's not a ton. So, so. Like any, any press that like pretty much relates to like, say Ricky gets in the news cause he's now on the board of this uh, local birthing center that they're starting as a nonprofit. And, you know, I got the 20 under 40 thing. So I put that in like my um, about us page is like mm -hmm. a link. So that's the type of backlinking you're talking about those types of things. It's perfect. Okay, yep. cool. Yep, yep, yeah, yep. that's, that's good. Cause then I can link to those and all right. Yep. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Yeah. So kind of, kind of breaking the, we'll, we'll tie this into a bow and I'll, I'll see if there's any other big questions you've got, but I know I'm throwing a lot at you. <clears throat> so let me share my iPad real quick. And okay. while, I'm, while I'm drawing this out, any other questions you've got on the top of your mind that are like burning questions you don't want to leave this call without? <laughs> my, my last question, uh, we have one Airbnb, um, that's down by the university area. Mm -hmm. Um, would it be smart to be linking our Airbnb kind of on as one of our pages on Grand Realty as being something else that we offer? And that counts kind of as a backlink. And I don't know, I was just trying to think about that one is like, what, what could go into this website that would be helpful? And, you know, that's, that's one of them. One of the things that it just sits on Airbnb or VRBO, we don't really do anything else with. Yeah, dude. So let me actually show, I'm going to stop sharing this. So anyone listen to this, the ways that I personally use Carrot myself are uh, for my rental properties and for Airbnb. So uh, if you were to Google like um, running Y townhouse for rent, which is something that people type in, I don't know where it's ranking now, but I've literally put no effort into getting it ranked other than launching on Carrot. I have no backlinks, none of that stuff. But so running Y townhomes for rent, it's, it's a resort here in Oregon. We bought a townhouse there in 2012, like crazy cheap, dude. 112,000 bucks, three, three bedroom, two and a half bath, 1500 square foot, fully furnished on the golf course. What? Yeah. what? That's awesome. 112 grand. <laughs> yeah. So look at this. So right here, the running wise own website, of course, dominates it. But yeah. then right here, this is my site over VRBO. Wow. 
Um, so that's my site. You want to know what VRBO listing is the first one? That's mine because I, I, I optimized it. First. Yeah. Okay. And then the, the Airbnb listing, that's mine. Um, so here's the thing, guys. You guys can Google optimize your freaking Airbnb and VRBO, VRBO listings. The way, the way you write your title on there, the way you write your content on there, oh. the, of, of, the, of the top 10 spots for renting townhomes and running Y, three yeah. are my own. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna look at your uh, your stuff for that, and then I'm gonna copy that for mine. <laughs> you, do, you should. So this is the website I'm using. It's really simple. I didn't put a lot of time into it. Um, I don't get a ton of traffic because so literally I don't market this. Right? It's just. Yeah, yeah. But I, I get two to five rentals a year just through the website that I can track through, and That's then cool. the rest are all Airbnb, VRBO, and it stays busy all the time. So it's just simple. Cool. I took I took one of our templates and, like you were saying, broke it apart. In the testimonial section, I didn't get testimonials from my clients. I should have. Like, mm -hmm. just take them off of Airbnb and put them over here. I just okay. got them for the running why. But yeah. this was before I had listed it. I didn't have any. I didn't have any reviews on my stuff. So now yeah. I should probably okay. take my reviews. Yeah, um, but it's still it's ranked high just because the carrot page and all that stuff loads fast, does all that stuff, and then yep. you, you've changed the content, so you're beating out other stuff. Plus, it's now it's linked to VRBO and Airbnb. Yeah. Okay, yeah, and cool. it's, it's useful. You've got good, useful content on here about the resort. And I just took this from other places and rewrote it. Some good FAQ about the property, mm -hmm. you know, some basic crap. And then this right here just links to the Airbnb listing. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Yep, just links to that. That's cool. That's a cool place. Yeah. And so huh. when, when you're titling, when you're titling your, your thing, make sure that you're titling your thing based uh -huh. off of what someone might type into Google. So running Y townhouse is what people were, were typing. Then I wanted to add a qualifier because if every other person had running Y townhouse on there, how do I make my stand out? Well, with the view, oh. everyone, everyone wants a view at the running Y. No one wants an, a bad view room, right? So it's like running Y townhouse with a view. <laughs> I, then I put that in. So that stands out. Right. And I did that with, with Airbnb or VRBO, VRBO and they're ranking really well. Wow. That's cool. Yep. Um, last question. If, if you still have time, mm -hmm. um, individual content, you know, writing things, say I write a story, uh, you know, I practice storytelling, write, storytelling and writing those things. Mm -hmm. Should those just go on the grand reality website is like, I wrote this cool, you know, article on, you know, you know, whatever, like one of them was like last year I fired myself, you know, I had to fire myself from my business in order to, you know, step out so I could let Ricky step in to kind of make things roll the way we needed them to go. Mm, yeah. Um, do you think keep those separate or put those on just our, our, our main site as part of just as a blog post? Oh, I mean, it's same thing. That's your call. I, th I think it depends on what is the brand you're wanting to, to put out there and, and what uh, is, you know, what is the authority that you're looking to build and who are the niches, right? Like right, right. Here, here's an example. If you're, if you're going after a bunch of niches that are 65 years and older um, buyers and sellers, but then on your blog, you're talking about how you reinvented yourself at 36 or whatever it is right. and all this stuff. Ah, it's probably not the spot to put that. Maybe okay. I'd like your own site, but if, if in general, your prospects are similar to you, right? They're yeah. investors, they're maybe entrepreneurs, maybe okay. they're, you know, similar, age, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, if, as long as your primary niches, your avatar mm -hmm. would get value from that content, then yes, I would put it there. Oh, I like it, how you said that. It, you. Helps you, it helps you connect with them further. And, yeah. and that's the thing that most agents aren't going to do that. Most agents are going to give the, the darn really boring monthly report snapshot that they copy and oh, pasted yeah. from Caldwell Banker, that's yeah. corporate that sent it to them. And they're not going to stand out. So that, that's one of the ways I like to really connect with people. Here's a good example for me personally. The Carrot Cast, dude, I started, I'm like, I don't want to talk about real estate much because I don't, <laughs> like, I'm not a full-time house flipper. I'm not an agent. Yeah. I have my own properties. You know, I buy, yeah. I, I buy and hold stuff. But I'm like, I, that just doesn't interest me. Uh, right. What interests me is the mindset stuff. What interests me is talking about my entrepreneurial journey and how, how it can relate to any entrepreneur, including real estate investors and agents. And the more all in I went on that, I recognized, man, my clients are going through the same stuff. Like, right. how, how can my story relate to them? I have fun doing it. It's sustainable at that point because I like to do it. Right. So that I want to do and people really resonate with it. Cool. Yeah. I like that. So like, I guess like thinking about that, you know, I want to be a community first person and I want to show myself in the community. So anything I write about the community or something I've done in the community, like impact club posts would probably be a great thing because that's connected to the site. 
and those things. So firing yeah. yourself could mean that you're quitting your business. That might be a weird post, you know, they'd be like, uh-huh. is this guy going to be here tomorrow? You know, type of thing or is this company? But uh, so, yeah, so maybe things that are opportunistically a good fit for the website, like that fits the avatar, like you said. Yeah. That well, makes sense. Even firing yourself, I think works because <laughs> I think the commotion, people were asking. pull back and look at the reasons that you fired yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm not going to put words in your mouth, but I'm just going to make stuff up for the sake of time. So let's, let's say that you fired yourself so you could focus in on things that you're more passionate about and give you more energy in real estate yeah. and you know, these 14 other reasons I would say, Hey, you know, sometimes in life, you know, we, we go through transitions, we buy a, a home, we sell a home or, or we have kids or kids move out of our home and go to college. We change careers. We have highs, we have lows. And you know what? Um, I love what I'm doing in real estate, but I really discovered certain parts of it dragged me down a little bit. Mm-hmm. And these are the parts that I absolutely love about what I do. This, 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 and this. But these things over here, just like in your job that you guys have, there's some things I just honestly don't like about the work. So how do I, I pulled back and, and I said, how do I make it to where I love my work even more than I already do? And I can serve my best clients even more and then really dive in and make a bigger impact. Well, you know what? I had to fire myself. And here's what that means. I fired myself from these four things that don't add value, don't add as much uh, as, as high a value. So I'm focusing over here. And what does that mean to you? Well, it means I can go all in on this and I can help our, my, my help make a bigger impact with Impact Club and help you guys do this more as clients of mine. Da, 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 da. So if you take it from that approach, then that yeah. definitely does. Okay. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yep, cool. cool. So dude, let, let's wrap this. I'd be happy to hop on a call again in a couple months and do a checkup call. So I'm writing some notes cool. here. The citations you've already got rolling. Um, over the next two to three months, I, I'd maybe do like two to three backlinks. Okay. Um, you know, per month if you can, but if you can't, I mean, it's like you just get to them whenever you can get to them. I mean, the, 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 the quicker you can get to them, obviously the, the, the faster the, the results are going to pull. Um, but minimum, I would do two to three backlinks a month. And okay. some of them could be your other sites. Some of them could be collaborating with people locally, or it could be charity things or your impact club website, link that yeah. to your darn thing. Um, we're going to give you one. So you're going to get a backlink uh, linking up on this thing. So you'll get a good one. Awesome. Link. Yeah. Put that on the site. Yep. Uh, the about page on the investor, uh, definitely okay. need to get that updated and your testimonials. Okay. Um, uh, just see if you can't slap the, the photo of those properties in there and get more testimonials in there, or update your testimonial process. Yeah. I like that idea. That's a good one. Uh, so out, out here, you know, two, three months out kind of what I would do. We didn't really talk about this, but, um, on the PPC side of things, mm-hmm. if, you're, if your ROI is really, really good, and and if you're if you're um, are, are you exhausting your ad spend ever in PPC? Like, or uh, can you I not think, ever spend it? Uh, we yeah, I think we use it daily. I think we're only at like thirty three dollars a day, though. You know, like yeah. it says with thirty three, like where we're at, we pretty much have the market. Yep. And so I was like, well, I don't know if I need to go up, but um, yeah. The, the, the only the only thing to look at potentially going up is there's my whole max cost per lead, max cost per deal calculation. Okay. You, you have your average profit per deal. I'm just going to make up numbers here, right? Okay. You, you can do the calculator on your end. So let's say your average profit per deal is 20K. It's going to be a little bit different okay. since you're doing the Burr method because you're not yeah. like straight up flipping it. Yeah. I forgot, forgot what that is for you. And then how many leads does it take you to get one of those deals? I'm just going to same thing, make up a number. Let's say 10. Okay. okay. So figure out of those leads that are coming in, how many of those does it take to get that that profit number, whatever it is. And then um, what I like to do is like, what's your trade? How much would you trade in order to get this $20,000 deal? And so let's say in this case, man, I'd, I'd totally trade like you know, 4K or whatever. I'll, say 4K. I'll totally trade 4K in marketing to get the $20,000 all day long. Awesome. Me too. So then, yeah, exactly. So then take your 4K and then divide it by the 10 and that comes up with your with your um, cost per lead, your max cost per lead. Oh wow! Which in okay. this case is four hundred bucks, right? Like you look at that yeah. and go, man. Yeah. Math says, math says that if my average profit per deal is twenty k and it's be ten through this format to you know through PPC or whatever to get a deal, um, I can spend up to four hundred dollars a lead. And math would work. And and a lot of investors are kind of looking at they're proud of how little they're spending on their leads. They're like, man, I'm getting leads for forty two bucks, right? And so. What, what I would do here is if you're currently getting, do you know what you're getting leads for right now? Gosh, you know, I think the cost per lead, I think it's made like 10 to 12 bucks. Okay, cool. I mean, so look at this, man. 
Uh, this right here will help you kind of see where you can scale out and where you should or should not. So mm -hmm. if your, your current cost per lead through PPC is 10 bucks, and using this random example, like you gotta come up with your own numbers, uh, you essentially can have a lot more that you could spin and still have math work well for you. So wow. I, I, would, I, would look, I would look at your, your PPC and go, okay, are my ads running 24 hours a day in my market? Because in your market, it's a smaller market yeah. where it's gonna be harder to spend it all versus a Dallas or a Houston. Um, Dallas or Houston, you could like, you could have your ad costs run away from you if you're, if you're not. <laughs> it still works insanely yeah. well, but you got to be on top of it. So what, what I would do is I would go, cool. Are my ads running 24 hours a day? Cause if they shut off at, let's say eight o'clock at night, because you exhausted your ad spend that oh, day. I think that does happen. Yeah. Right. right? Like when, when are your most motivated people are looking, they're looking at night. Okay. You know, they're looking at yeah. 11 o'clock at night, two, two o'clock in the morning and your ads are off at that time. Because uh, you exhausted your ad budget. Um, so, so that's a spot you could look at for optimization point of, of, am I exhausting my ad budget or how, how do my numbers work? Do I still have a big gap between my max cost per lead uh, okay. and where I am now? And then I would just see what it looks like to, to slowly bring that ad budget up. So your ads are only 24 hours a day and then see where your cost per lead and your deal, uh, your, your closing ratios go up. All hold steady okay. mind, is you're going to end up being able to squeeze more deals out. Your cost per lead will go up. Yeah, but that's part of the aim is is you're you're underspending right now versus where you could. So there's some on the, there's some on the table. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it seems like it's an open market in, in this area. You know, as far as you know how that goes with pay per click and everything. And so I definitely could need to address that and spend more on it for sure. Yeah. Cool. So check your PPC budget maybe next month. Get some app links going. Cool. Yeah, I mean, you have some other action items. I'll write them down afterwards and get them to you. Okay. But, dude, I know that was a fire hose, and you're probably walking away from here going, "Oh my gosh, now I've got 400 hours of work." Yeah. But uh, I, I think the big things are you're doing you're doing things right, which is really cool. cool. Um, and yeah. what I, what I would do is just just carve out on a quarterly basis. Go, okay, I know I've got a full time business, uh, two full time businesses, right? So th this quarter, what do I want to tackle? with my online stuff. Well, this quarter, I'm just going to go into this niche, just this one niche, or this quarter, I'm going to build out, build out these five niche pages and start to get them ranked. And that's it. Right. And then maybe yeah. next quarter, it's like, cool, I'm going to dig deeper into those niches and create my niche video series for each one of those niches. Mm -hmm. And then that's what you're going to do that quarter. And you're just going to you're stacking bricks, man. That's what you're doing now. Stacking bricks. It's hard work while you're stacking bricks. You're not seeing the result while you're stacking the bricks. You got a whole row of bricks. It's not a wall yet. You're looking at it going, I can't do anything with one row of bricks. <laughs> yeah. You keep, you keep stacking it and eventually that wall is going to bounce everything back for you. So you're in brick stacking mode, man. Yeah. Yeah. We're looking for long term too, man. Like yep. 10 years. So <laughs> 10 years we can make this thing happen. I'll just keep building this website one brick at a time. So <laughs> you're going to crush it, dude. Well, yeah. man, I, I appreciate it. If you have any other follow up questions, just ping me with an email. Okay. Um, and then, like I said, I'd be pumped to, to hop on and, two, three months after you've implemented some of this. I know you're not going to get yeah. to all of it. Yeah. yeah. Do a checkpoint with you. Cool, man. Thanks right. so much. I really appreciate your time and yep. Brady too. I appreciate awesome. you reaching out. So this, I'm excited to go back and just watch this again. So cool. I love it. Well, thank you guys. Have an awesome, awesome rest of the weekend. I need to meet you in person one of these days, Robert. That's right. Yeah, we'll come down. <laughs> One of these days when we have to go check on our uh, mobile home park that we have under management. Down I'm going to drag him to a carrot camp. Don't worry. <laughs> we'll spend you should, time. man. I'd, I'd the next it. one, I get to go. So. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Cool. Good to see you guys. Yeah, yeah. take care. Yeah. You have a great day. Thank you for your time. Hey, you too. Bye. Cool. Take care.